Hi guys, it's Graham from Mowgli Adventures and today we're going to talk about the RV Camper and Boat Solar Design Tool. Now this tool is going to give you everything you need when it comes to working out what your solar system is going to look like. It's free. All you have to do is join the website and sign up for the newsletter. You can buy it if you want. So once you've downloaded your file and you've installed the Adobe Reader, you'll be presented with this front page. If you've got the handbook, you'll recognize it's got a very similar look and feel on the front design. So the front page is all about safety. Don't make mistakes, don't electrocute yourself, etc. You need to be careful. Uh, there is a, an affiliate disclaimer because in the PDF, there are some links to products that if you buy, we may get a small commission. And if you do, I thank you very much for that. And then um, if we go to the first page, you'll notice that the first box is about your preferred uh, measurement scale. I want you to be comfortable with this. You're either comfortable with feet or meters. And here you can choose either one. So let's use feet for an example here. The next piece is about the wire size. So if you're in Europe, you'll most likely get millimeters squared. But if you're in North America, then the American wire gauge, or AWG, is probably the sizes that you are comfortable with. So the whole point is trying to make sure that yeah, you can measure it in distances and the wire sizes that you need. And the reason why this is important is that you may or might not know that DC power, particularly uh, from a battery or from solar panels, etc., uh, is very inefficient over greater lengths. And the way that we overcome this so that we don't lose our energy is to use larger wires than you would normally expect to see in an AC system. And so the tool here will accommodate the correct wire sizes over a set of distances. So the longer the distance, the more resistance, and therefore you need a larger wire size. And then we can choose our system voltage. So we can choose 12 or 24 volts, depending on our base system, and of course on the solar system that we, or the solar panels that we're going to buy. So our next piece then is about the panels and the configurations. And if you've already got your panels and you know the specs, then this will be helpful. If you're looking to buy for panels, then this is the information that you need to get from the website or from the, the, the vendor or the merchant that's selling you these panels. So, you know, you can put in a size 100, 200 watts. It doesn't really make any difference or 130 watts, whatever the size of the panel is, then you can fit that. You'll get an open circuit voltage VOC, uh, which will give you a, a value. So, you know, on a 12 volt, 100 watt panel, I'd expect to see something about 19 volts thereabouts. You might get a different one, depending on the, the thing that you have. And then you'll get a current, an ISC, and that was probably around five amps or four and a half amps, depending on the panel. The bigger the size panels, the higher the voltages, uh, the higher the VOC, and the higher the IOC. Um, so you put those in and then the number of panels that you're going to put on your roof. So I got three, maybe four. You can have up to eight. So you have a big bus, you can get eight on there. Uh, let's say four. And are you going to wire them in series or in parallel? And here is a big debate. Now wiring in series means that you connect them one after the other after the other, like a JZ chain. And the other is the set of, um, to set them in parallel where they sit side by side by side. And you can have a combination of either two. Now, further on in the document, there are some links to posts that will help you decide which works for you. Um, I prefer to have mine in series, but there are limitations because the controllers, the MPPT controllers, have limits on how much voltage they can put in and how much current they can accept. And if you add panels in series, they will be adding the voltages. So you might exceed the limits of that controller. Same for if you add them all in parallel, you might exceed the amount of current that the controller can accept. So these are something things that you need to just be aware of. And again, further in the documentation, there are some website posts that you can read to help you understand what that means and what the implications are for you. So based on what I've just seen and what I've said, um, I'm going to have to get a 30 amp uh, MPPT controller. That's what it's suggesting to me. So again, 
look at the in, in specs of that controller and make sure that your input voltages or your input currents do not exceed the limitations of that product. Now we need to look at the cables. So that's the solar panels to the MPPT. So that's all the cables on the roof. You can put in the length. Uh, I would imagine, you know, there's quite a large length um, based on your roof. So let's say 20 foot. Uh, and we know what the fuse is because of the currents that we're going to be running. And then we need to work out the cables from the controller, the MPP to controller to our battery or our battery isolator or our buzz bars that we're going to work off. And again, that would be, I don't know, for example, five foot. The fuse size is set because that's based on the uh, controller output that you'd expect. So now let's have a look on the next page. We now get a diagram that shows us that we've got four panels in series with our 30 amp controller. We've got the wire sizes going from the controller to the battery along through a 30 amp fuse. And we have got the nine amp fuse going to the panels that we can see there. You will also get some brackets and some screws and the MC4 connectors that you need to join the cables up. And the diagram shows you which ways those connectors go because there's a male and a female. And if you can see in series here, they are linked together, one, two, three, four. Uh, and you can see how they, they join from positive to negative, positive to negative. So let's just change it to a parallel setting. Okay, and I'm going to use, I don't know, six panels this time. And already you can see, based on the same panels, the same 100 watt panels that I'm using as a spec here, that I now need a 60 amp controller. And uh, I put them in parallel. So let's see how the diagram changes now when we've got it. So now you can see six diagrams in parallel all joined together through a um, series of three-way MC4 connectors, then they will all uh, connect into the solar controller and then link on to the battery. And you can see that the wire sizes are now quite specific. That's quite a large wire size from the MPP to controller up to the solar panel array. And remember I said, when you add them in parallel, you increase the current. And here you can see that you need a fairly hefty cable to run from the controller up to the junction box for the solar panels, as well as a larger fuse. The cables from the controller to the battery are not too small, but they are still quite significant because it's 60 amps and it's a 16 millimeter squared. So let's just change that in terms of AWG and so maybe that will help you understand a little bit more and you can see now that we're talking two AWG for cable between the controller and six AWG from the batteries to the controller. So that gives you the diagram and shows you how you add them together and as you can see in parallel all the positives are connected together as are all the negatives in a separate line. The parts that you need underneath it, you can see you need a solar panel, the charge controllers, the batteries, the solar gland entries for when the cables go from the panels into the van. Uh, the fuses, if it's over 30 amp fuses, you generally have to use a larger ANL type fuse, not the small blade ones. Uh, you've got cable listed there, the inline fuses that you could use or the inline fuse holders for certain, up to a certain size. Uh, the connectors to and the white branches are all listed there as well as the brackets to mount your panels on the roof. Again, you need to bond the panels onto the roof, but you also need to make sure there's a bolt or screw in that bracket. What you don't want is the panel to fly off the van as you're driving down the freeway, because that would just be really bad for everyone, including yourselves and the people that are following you behind. So crimps as well to make sure that the wire terminals fit neatly into those screw terminals on the controller. Ideally, you should have a multimeter to check connectivity and to make sure that you get voltages out of the panels on the way out as you install them. Game electrical screwdrivers that are insulated so you can't get electrocuted if you touch the wrong thing. And here's some adhesives and wire crimps there. So there's a whole list of products that you would need to get to to put your panels on your roof. And if you want to learn more about what, how this all hangs together, as you can see, there are lots of posts in this area that will take you directly to Mowgli's Adventures website, 
where you will see a discussion about what you need here. So there we go. If I do this one, a um, whole load of information there. Again, learn more about the solar controllers and learning about batteries too. And that is it in its very simple terms. It's a very easy tool to use, very informative, and will help you see the wood for the trees. If you have any questions, contact us on Mowgli Adventures, write to us at mogliadventures.com, or you can join the Mowgli Adventures Electrics Handbook Facebook group. And again, I'll be able to answer any questions you may have around the tool. So this is Graham, this is Mowgli Adventures, and thank you for watching. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm.